Hey, just real quick, I wanted to uh, make a little comment here because I know I, I read a a lot of stuff in the King James only material uh, talking about Origin and Jerome and Erasmus, and um, I'm doing some research on Erasmus, and I stumbled across a resource in Google Books, and it's one that you can um, you can preview um, a good portion of it, and uh, found some interesting material that might be of interest. Uh, the resource, which I'll put it on the screen in the annotation, but the resource is Erasmus and the New Testament, the Mind of a Christian Humanist, and it's by Albert Rabil, R-A-B-I-L, and on page 52 of this work, it really starts, the chapter starts on up, and uh, this preview kind of leaves out two pages, like 50 to 50, 50 and 51, so there's a disconnect, but 52 starts with this, uh, of course it's in the middle of a sentence, but it, it starts during this period there is little reference to Origen's impact upon him but writing to Colette C-O-L-E-T three years later he remarks now this is a quote from Erasmus I have perused a good part of the works of Origen under whose teaching I think I have made some progress he seems to disclose some original springs and points out the principles of theological science and then there's uh, some footnotes to this, which are very detailed, um, and, and kind of give you some other sources to follow. Um, and then the next pages continue, and basically the, the, what's coming across in this source is that, okay, we know from other sources that Erasmus, um, you know, the his translation, uh, creating a new Greek text, and his main purpose was to revise Jerome's Latin Vulgate. But anyway, um, that wasn't his main work, uh, or that was his main work that he's known for. But he also um, worked on the Church Fathers, translating some of their works. Uh, he was wanting to refresh those into, you know, a, a more modern Latin, I guess. Anyway, so some of the, um, some of the uh, resources here kind of show that. Uh, Erasmus had did not have a negative view towards Jerome or Origen. Um, one of the footnotes here is talking about in 1503, Aldus published some of the homilies of Origen on the Old Testament, which had been translated by Jerome. A preference, um, no, a preface, sorry, written probably by Jerome Aleander, highly extolling Origen accompanied the edition and gave rise to others. A complete edition of Origen was published in 1512. Erasmus prepared an edition which was published, however, only after he died. Um, let's see. Okay. Let's see. Uh, as far as Erasmus... Erasmus gives a, a example here of how he is kind of thinking highly of a allegorical interpretation. Um, I'll give you a quote of that so that you'll see what I'm talking. About. And I'll also put the link to this. You know, I don't know how long it'll be able to be previewed on Google Books, but it'll be interesting. Um, it says, through allegorical interpretation, quote, if you break through the husk and find the kernel, pondering one little line will have more savor and food value than the whole Psalter when it is chanted through with reference only to the literal content. How does one go about this kind of reflection? Um, first, one may gain help from Christian writers who have interpreted Scripture in this manner. From the interpretations of divine Scripture, Choose those which go as far as possible beyond literal meaning. After Paul, the best ex explicators of this sort are Origen, Ambrose, Jerome, and Augustine. And this is a footnote for that. I think it's footnote 50, which is cited from uh, Holborn, H-O-L-B-O-R-N, pages 33 to 34, I guess, and then uh, Himalik. H I M E L I C K, page 53. Um, so, anyway, kind of interesting. Um, you know, just because 
you know, there's always this negative light about Origen and how he corrupted the manuscripts and so forth. And you really, you know, you don't see that with Erasmus. Anyway, give you something to investigate yourself. Um, I thought that was interesting and kind of appropriate for the discussion. So I'll leave that with you.